Hi, I'm Kevin Eikenberry, and I'm here to help you reach your potential as a leader and a human being. Welcome to Remarkable TV and the Remarkable Leadership Podcast. If you happen to be watching on YouTube, so glad you are. Make sure you hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any future episodes and makes it easier to go back and watch older ones too. Today, I'm talking about overcoming email overload. Are you ready? Let's get started. You may not know this, but it's a fact that businesses grew and thrived before email even existed. I lived in that world. And while most of us today can't see how we would survive in business or do business without email, and most of us have a love-hate relationship with it, it's still something we need to figure out. And yet most of us are feeling overwhelmed and overloaded with email. So what are some things that you can do to overcome the overload? Number one, send less of it. I mean, think about it this way. Almost every email we send generates a response. So if we aren't sending it, we're going to get less of it back. Now, that alone isn't, isn't all you need to do for sure, but we sometimes forget that. We sometimes forget that the more often we use it, the more we're going to get back uh, on it. Not, not only in responses and replies, but we're teaching people that that's how we want to communicate. Like if we're sending them emails, that's what they're going to tend to do back to us. So want to overcome the overload? Send less email. Second, send shorter emails. The overload often comes. You ever, you ever notice this? You get the email, it's got four paragraphs, and you're like... I'll come back and look at this later. Or you dive into it and then there's like five or six things in that email and the, the response to it might get long and involved. And you do know that the longer the thread goes, the more likely it is that we get off kilter or the email conversation goes sideways, right? So we can overcome the overload by sending shorter emails. Don't put five things in one email. Separate emails will help keep all of them crisper clearer, and even though there might be more emails, they're much easier for us to manage. Number three, think carefully about who to copy. Now, this kind of relates to sending less of it, right? Like some people say, well, I'll just add them because. And yet every person that you add just because, or as an FYI, now they have to process that email, and then they might respond, or they might have a question. You get the idea. It's a snowball effect. I am not saying we shouldn't copy people on email. I'm saying we should be more intentional about who we copy and why, and even set some agreements on your teams about what is needed or expected in terms of responses. And the fourth thing that you can do to overcome email overload is to pick up the phone. Yeah, you know that thing that you look at all day long that you process your email on? You can use it as an actual phone. And you know what? Sometimes if we would pick up someone and call them, it would solve the problem. It would clarify the communication much faster than an email. Because as fine a tool as email is, it is not great at conversation. And so maybe after the first email, you pick up the phone, or maybe you sometimes you pick up the phone instead of starting email. And guess what? Doing that will give you less email, more effective email, and ultimately better communication. Do those four things and you'll have a little less email, a little less overload for the emails you do have. Let me close with today's remarkable reminder. Email is a great tool, and the bane of work life. How you use it can make the tool more helpful and less painful. Well, thinking about how we communicate at a distance from each other, I know sometimes people send emails down the hall, but fundamentally, if you think about how to communicate differently and better at a distance, that's one of the things we have to do as a long distance leader, a remote or hybrid leader, right? So those are the, that's just a very simple sampling of the kinds of ideas you will get in the very practical second edition of our book, The Long Distance Leader. Hope you'll pick up your copy today so that you can get far more ideas than just this very simple thing I just shared with you to lead your teams more effectively and more confidently at a distance. You can learn more by going to kevinicanberry.com slash LDL. And from that link, you can get your copy. I hope you'll do that. And I hope you'll join me next week for another episode of Remarkable TV and the Remarkable Leadership Podcast.